I did something a little unusual tonight. I only read about one-third of the whole gospel. There's a longer portion. But this was the parable of Jesus, so I wanted to stay with that. In the last third of, of, the, of the reading, Jesus actually explains the parable. Second week in a row, we have a farming metaphor. Last week we talked about the yoke that farm animals bear to pull a plow or heavy cart. Today we have no plowing. We just have the sower going out into the field and throwing seed. Modern day farmers find this inconceivable because I don't think a seed is wasted modern day farming. It's all scientific. Everything is, the soil is, is, is treated properly. The seeds are planted properly. But in those days, in Palestine at the time of Jesus, the soil would just throw seed. And then when the plants came up, they transplanted to better ground. So Jesus takes this image He's a teacher, he's a rabbi, and rabbis of his time used parables, used stories to convey their message to teach. And Jesus was indeed a good teacher. So he teaches about the soul. So what's the seed? Well, in this context, we could say the seed is the word of God. The Word of God is being abundantly lavished on everything without regard to what it is. And we, we can compare that to God's love. God loves everyone unconditionally. Bad or good, worthy, no, it doesn't make a difference. God lavishes his love on all people. The first reading, kind of interesting, especially today, right? Justice from the heavens, the rain and the snow come down. Oh boy, did it come down today and yesterday, right? Well, can you imagine that's God's love just coming down on us all the time? So now, where's this seed going? Now, other parables that Jesus has, he usually says, the kingdom of God is like, and then he goes into his parable, what the kingdom of God is like. It's like the mustard seed, it's like this, okay, fine. But in this case, he's not saying the kingdom of God. He's saying what happens to the word about the kingdom of God and where it goes and who's listening. And what kind of listener am I? And sometimes I think, well, what's... You know, I'm really good soil. Okay, I'm, I'm good soil. So when the word comes to me, it's going to bear fruit because I'm good soil. And you see, over there, that, that guy over there, he's not good soil, but I'm good soil. No, it's not the way it works. Not only that, it's rather, it's rather not nice about me to think that other people aren't worthy of God's word. Sometimes I'm good soil. Sometimes I'm not good soil. Depends. Sometimes it depends on, on what's being said. Well, this, I could accept this, okay, I'm good soil for this. But this other thing, uh, I'm not such good soil then. And then there's times when I'm not praying enough. And I, I'm not accepting enough. And I'm not ready for it. I'm not good soil then. And sometimes I get angry, and sometimes I get impatient, and sometimes I'm mean and nasty. I'm not good soil then. No. And how do we become good soil? How do I become good soil? What do I have to do? I have to change. I have to change and be ready to accept 
the word of God, accept all of his words. St. Paul gives us a little, a little part of it. What does St. Paul say? St. Paul says, we know that all creation is groaning in labor pains, even until now groaning with pains. If I am going to change, I need to groan in pain. We need to suffer. To be good Christians, we need to suffer. In fact, that's the motto. We will suffer as Christians. That shouldn't, you know, shock us so much athletes need to practice need to exercise need to struggle to be their best students need to study and work hard to do their best performers need to constantly rehearse one of my favorite Guitar players, classical guitar, Andre Segovia, used to say that I practice every day. And if I miss one day, I know. If I miss two days, my housekeeper knows. If I miss three days, the whole world knows. If I stop practicing to be a Christian, if I stop praying, if I let myself go, then I'm not ready for his word. So the sower is sowing seed. Some is on the, on the path. The birds come and eat it up. Jesus tells us what that means. The seed sown on the path is the one who hears the word of the kingdom without understanding it. The evil one comes and steals it away. The seed sown on rocky ground is the one who hears the word and receives it at once with joy, but has no root and lasts only for a time. And when tribulation and persecution comes along, it immediately falls away. Some seed is sown among thorns, and the one who hears the word but worldly anxiety and the war of riches choke the weed and choke the word in his heart, and it bears no fruit. The seed sown on rich soil is the one who hears the word and understands it. I'm sometimes rich soil, and sometimes I'm not. So my prayer today is, that I want to change. I want to be rich soil as often as possible. It's our faith and our trust that God loves us so very much that he will give us the grace to be rich soil.